Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Guns, Knives, and Beer. And uh, today, I thought I would do something a little bit different and take a page out of my buddy Dominic Minichetti. And if you haven't checked out Dominic, go to his webpage, or not his webpage, go to his YouTube page, Dominic Minichetti, just like it sounds, and um, check him out. Uh, he does a lot of very different things. Um, kind of very similar to, to my channel as well. Um, different uh, topics, um, but always something usually to do with the outside, except when he's talking about interesting stuff. And so I thought I would take a page out of his book and show you an interesting item that I have and have had since I was very, very young. Uh, I don't know, I think I was probably six or seven at the time. Um, and um, this was something that was given to me, um, or left to me, by my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, um, when he passed away. And he passed away from a heart attack at a, a pretty early age. Um, and like I said, because I was pretty young as well. Um, and this was really, um, it's the only thing that I have of his, um, and that I know of anybody who has of his. Um, he didn't have a lot. Uh, my grandparents, you know, were not well off and well to do and, uh, um, on either side of my family. And, um, he, but he did, he owned a liquor store, um, for quite a few years uh, before he died. Um, but he was very influential and, and very much a part of his community. And both my grandparents on my maternal side were, um, were very into um, uh, philanthropy and, and, and um, helping, helping others. Um, my grandmother with the Leukemia Society um, and um, my grandfather with this. So what is in here? Well, let's get it open and I'll show you. Let's see if I can uh, put this out in a way where it's going to show. There we go. Um, this is, and I don't know exactly what they call it, but they have a specific term for these things. Um, at least this particular organization does. Um, and so this is his um, regalia, or whatever the term that they use to and this is from the um, the International Order of Oddfellows. And the International Order, Order of Oddfellows was formed like in the early 1800s or actually mid 1800s, um, like 1839 or something like that. And they were formed um, when this guy from England came over to the, the United States, and I don't know a lot of the history on this, um, and began this philanthropic um, kind of club. And the club had lodges, similar to the Masons. In fact, I think this might even be something spun off from the Masons, um, only because um, some of the symbols are very similar. Um, but this was this particular gallery was from the International Order of Odd Fellows, the Thomas Jefferson Lodge, uh, 441, which was in Brooklyn, um, New York, uh, and I believe he was an officer of the lodge. I believe he might have been even be pre been president or whatever they call it um, of the lodge for for some point of time um and then so this was i guess his okay so my camera cut off on me but uh i think we're back 
so again, the anything that we could find out about this. Um, so to just give you some information, the International Order of Odd Oddfellows um, was uh, created in the 18th century uh, in England, and it was to find people organized for the purpose of going out, going to giving aid to those in need and pursuing projects for the benefit of all mankind. Those who belonged uh, to the organization were called Odd Fellows, and they were known as the Three Link Fraternity, um, which is the symbol right here. Um, and the Three Links stand for Friendship, Love, and Truth. I don't think there's anything wrong with those things. Um, and today, they are a worldwide uh, fraternal order um, with over 5,000 lodges in 26 countries. And they're actively involved in civic and philanthropic, philanthropic efforts um, on a local, national, and international level. Um, they, um, they spend uh, money on relief efforts. Uh, they have an educational foundation. Uh, they have a SOS Children's Village for, for caring for, for orphaned uh, children in Cambodia. Um, they have a, they plant trees to leave a legacy, uh, arthritis research. I mean, obviously lots of different uh, charities that they are a part of. Um, and so I think it's a, a very worthwhile organization and I would love to find out more I would love to find out you know what my grandfather's part um, and his role in this organization was what this PG stands for I can't find anything on on their website um, it just might be a eh, regular guy um, I also know that there's different levels you know in terms you know just like uh, the Royal Order of Buffalo at the Grand Poobah well there's some kind of Grand Poobah of this thing um, all I know is that supposedly he was president of his um, lodge, and that lodge is no longer in existence. This, uh, these medallions are from 1939. That's the date that this was presented to him. Um, and that lodge has long closed down, um, which a lot of them did um, over the years. Uh, so it would be interesting to find out if anybody had any information on it. I'm sure that anybody who was my grandfather's age is probably no longer here anymore. Um, but if there were some kind of history, that would be great to, to find out. But it's something that I have. It's something that I've cherished ever since I was a very small kid. And I've just always kept it in a safe place. I've lost a lot of things over the years, things that uh, I wish I still had. Um, but this is one item that for some reason, I always know where it is, and I've always hang, hung on to it. Don't forget to click the like sub or, and subscribe buttons. Uh, ring the bell so that you get plenty of notifications. And don't forget to leave a comment, especially if you know anything about this organization. Um, I would appreciate you know, a contact or, or somebody to, to talk to that will actually return my phone calls. Um, it would be great to find out, and maybe it's something that I would be interested in. Um, well, we'll talk to you next time. Stick around. I think there will be a beer segment. We'll see you next time on Guns, Knives, and Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another beer segment on Guns, Knives, and Beer. And we are at the State 48 brewery here in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have this. Yikes, you're saying, what is going on with the head on that beer? Well, it's a nitro pour. Nitro, as in nitrous oxide, pumped into the carbonation as it comes out and puts a really tiny little bubble head on there. As in tiny bubbles. Yeah, well, you know the case. Anyway, I gotta stop digressing, but I do. Um, this is a, what is this? This is a Dare Mighty Things. Dare Mighty Things, this is an IPA. It is on the Nitro Tap. 
and it is clocking in at 7.5% alcohol by volume with a 70 IBU. Lots of hop going on there. Digging that head. Oh yeah. All right, let's give this thing a sniff. Okay, a little funky smelling. Doesn't smell very hoppy. It smells a little funky. Getting me nervous, but you can never tell until you taste it. And there you go. Sometimes smell is deceiving. The taste is actually really, really good. It's a good West Coast style IPA with a nitro draw. Gives it a little bit of a creaminess. Creamy. IPA? Nah. Well, it's because of those tiny bubbles. Um, there you go. This is a Dare Mighty Things from the State 48 Brewery in Phoenix, Arizona. We'll see you next time.